On this week's episode, get the latest news on OSU Has Talent and how you can get involved. And also, stay tuned to hear from OSU students about the latest trends in music, only on Bombshell, Bombshell Music News. Hey there all you music fans, welcome to this week's episode of Bombshell Music News on the one and only KBVR. I'm Courtney Cosette. And I'm Camille Field. And we're your Bombshell hosts, here to give you the latest news on all things music in Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. Our Bombshell correspondent, Nicole Knudsen, got some music insight from students at Oregon State and discovered what are the latest trends in the world of music. This summer, I think in Seattle, um, but it was electronic music. Oh, cool! Who was it? Oh, or was it like a, like a um, show? It was yeah, it was a show. So there was Feed Me and some other artists. Hey, excuse me. Oh, you, you got it. Like that. Yeah. That's it. Came along, and then you like everything. <laughs> Never mind. I like country. Yeah, like the popular stuff. So okay. what are you listening to? I'm actually listening to Young Detective right now. What kind of music are they? Alright, you can make go. Like alt, indie, rock, sort of. I'm like, oh, watching Bombshell News. Thanks, Nicole. Now don't move a muscle. We'll be back in two with more music news. Thanks for sticking with us. You can relax because we're back with the latest music news. Looking to spend a lazy afternoon relaxing and watching something that the whole family will enjoy? Then be sure not to miss the spring concert of The Heart put on by the Valley Children's Choir this Sunday, March 4th at 3 p.m. According to hbcchoirs.com, the program will include, quote, a varied selection of choral music performed by community youth from 2nd to 12th grade who are members of the five choirs of the heart of the Valley Children's Choir." End quote. The choir has been around for over 25 years and is made up of over 300 children from across the state, so it's clear just how well established and full of striking voices it is. Tickets are $8 for adults and $5 for children and seniors. Tickets can be purchased at concert rehearsals, Grace Winds in Corvallis, Sid's Jewelers in Albany, or at the door. The show will take place at First United Methodist Church and is sure to be enjoyable for all ages. There was a great turnout last weekend as the OSU Has Talent auditions took place February 24th through the 26th in the KBVR studios. This opportunity provided students with the chance to get involved, represent themselves, and just have fun. 
The final eight chosen acts will have a chance to perform in front of the OSU community come March 16th and have the chance to win some cash. But here's where it gets interesting. You have the final vote. The audience will have the chance to vote for the winner through a text voting system. So make sure to join the action in the Memorial Union Ballroom on March 16th at 7 p.m. for the final performances as the finalists compete for the grand prize of $300 in front of a panel of interactive judges and their peers. Second place will receive a prize of $200 and the third finalist will receive $100. Plus, all finalists will receive a free OSU Has Talent t-shirt, so you won't want to miss this. Come out and see your talented peers face off and place your vote. If you're trying to make plans for tonight, Friday, March 2nd, search no further because Coin of the Realm Orchestra is playing at Fireworks Restaurant at 8 p.m. The band plays spirited Ukrainian folk music that's infused with a lively cultural sound. According to the band's MySpace page, quote, the band joined together in 2005 on the premise of keeping the music of the old culture alive, end quote. Listen to any of their songs, and after the first few seconds, you're transported to another place entirely. One truly feels as if they are in the Ukraine at an upbeat dinner party or street festival. Coin of the Realm will also be playing with violinist Zach Kono Wall Chuck tonight. According to Fireworks event page, he is extraordinarily talented and has been recognized as an international champion on the fiddle. If you're interested in cultural music, polka, waltz, or simply great acoustic music, hurry down to Fireworks Restaurant to catch the sweeping and rich sounds of Coin of the Realm Orchestra at 8 p.m. A Eugene, Oregon native, Matt Kearney, is gaining nationwide recognition after the release of his debut album, Nothing Left to Lose. The title track reached number 41 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was featured in the TV series Dirty Sexy Money, now based in Nashville, Tennessee. Our very own KBVR was able to gain an exclusive interview before Matt's performances in Portland, Oregon that took place February 17th and 18th, reports the Daily Barometer and get a little insight into the journey of singer-songwriter Matthew Kearney. After being on the tour for the past two weeks supporting his latest album, Young Love, blending folk, rock, and hip-hop, the album is full of catchy, listenable songs like the hit single, Hey Mama, and Ships in the Night. Matt admits that performing live has come easier to him than it did in the past, reminiscing on the days when he would play at, quote, weird frat houses at Oregon State. Yes, it's easier than that, he says. Matt says the West Coast leg they have been doing for the past two weeks has been pretty amazing and feels like this record is maybe the most exciting record to play live, stating, quote, it really has come to life in a special way. This past Saturday, February 25th, Corvallis was officially rocked out when the Led Zeppelin tribute band Stairway Denied performed at the Majestic Theater in downtown Corvallis at 9 p.m. The show had a great turnout and was given much praise. Just ask about anyone in attendance and they will say just how authentic and close they sounded to the iconic 70s band. Miners in attendance were especially grateful for the opportunity to see the show as the band typically only plays at bars and clubs for those 21 plus. Tickets were only five to ten dollars and the show was held in the incredible setting of Corvallis's historic and beloved Majestic Theater. Helmed by vocalist Noah Stroop, Stairway Denied aims to make not only great recorded work but also to have a truly inspiring stage presence and performance. According to the band's MySpace page, quote, Invoking the spirits of the gods of rock, Stairway Denied forego gaudy impersonation for the passionate intensity of Zeppelin's early day performances. End quote. If you missed them this past weekend, you can catch them in a couple weeks at Club Sub Zero in Corvallis. Don't turn the dial because we will be back with more music news after a short break. Welcome back, Music Addicts. Some of our bombshells caught up with local artists to get the inside news on upcoming shows and albums. Let's check it out. 
Hey Corvallis, I'm Sierra Lever, your bombshell on the road. I'm outside the Sub-Zero in downtown Corvallis. It's a nightclub on 4th Street and they have performances tonight. So let's go check out what they have going on. What's up everyone? I'm here with Hero. Got a chance to hang out in the back VIP room, get a little interview. So what I want to hear from you is where'd you come up with the name Hero, first of all? I came up with the name Hero. Um, originally I was filthy famous. I'm, I'm part of a group called Family Business. And um, the way hip hop's kind of going right now, I, I, I'm not really feeling it. And so uh, my idea is kind of that I'm kind of coming to take back what hip hop used to be, the the lyrics and the party vibe, just the whole package, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of like the hero of the game right now. And I was constantly saying, hip hop needs a hero, hip hop needs a hero. So my manager started calling me hero fame, and so I kept with it. Okay. Well, I Stop like it. So, so what do you feel is the state of hip hop right now? I think hip hop is in a, it's in an arguably great place. It's, uh, I think it's kind of, um, the grass is always greener, you know, so uh, I know that there was a point when everybody was saying they wish hip-hop was a little bit more mainstream and they wish hip-hop was in Madison Square Garden and these type of things, and, and now that we have it, we just didn't realize what it took to get there. And so I feel like hip-hop's a little watered down, it's a little fruity right now. <laughs> like, and I mean fruity, not, I mean fruity like uh, a little too sweet, you know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not its original grungy core, you know what I mean? Okay, so how would you describe the music that you make? Um, I make p music that people want to listen to, you know, I, I got a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm not really big on like the, like the blood guts, I hate my mom type stuff. <laughs> but uh, like, I got some party tracks, uh, I got some tracks for my people that are locked up, and I'm more of like a punchline rapper. Um, I'm here to make you laugh, um, you know, enjoy the music. It's music, dance, laugh, party, whatever, anything positive. I'm here to keep you positive. Well, I know we were talking earlier, and you said that you had just dropped a mixtape in September. Um, what can we expect from that mixtape? Anything you want to tell us about it? Anything special? <laughs> um, it's your top five favorite mixtapes, but it takes up three. That's that's a general rule. Um, it's the best mixtape out. No, I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not joking at all. I don't even know why I tried to like act like I'm not that arrogant, because I truly am. But. Um, it's the most downloaded mixtape in the Northwest right now, which I'm really proud of. I got um, a little over 3,700 uh, units pushed. It's on datpiff.com, search Hero Fame, Taking Back Gotham. I got features from a lot of Portland's hottest, uh, City Voice, my little brother, the other half of Family Business, and um, Scripps, who's the CEO of Hand to Hand Fam, which is the record label I'm contracted under. Um, I got a lot of features from good people, Young Deuce up in the, in the East Coast. Just, just a lot of good features, a lot of good vibes, all around good music. Okay. Now, well, congratulations, your mixtape. How did you get started with rap? Um, I actually, this is really cliche because of my, uh, I, I guess, <laughs> so I started off battling, right? Okay. <laughs> Every white kid's gonna say that. <laughs> but like, uh, I started off battling when I was like 12, and I lost and kind of was like, I, was, I lost, I got second place one time. What, or I got third place, I expected to get second. I wouldn't have got first, I would have cool a second, but I got I got ripped off on my on the second place, and so I kind of quit on battling, and I started just recording my music, you know? And um, so that's basically how I started, just from battling into, into the booth, you know? It was kind of more of a dream. When I started rapping, it wasn't so, uh, you know, nowadays everybody raps, you know what I mean? But when I started, it wasn't that way. It was, oh, he's that white kid that raps, right? <laughs> now every white kid raps. <laughs> When you're writing your songs, what's the process like? I'm not the type of person, oh, I'm inspired, I'm gonna write. But that's where the, the blessing of uh, iPhones and technology comes along. So I'll write a lot throughout the week, and then on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'll kind of bring everything together, throw a beat on. Uh, Hand to Hand Fan, which is my record label, built a recording studio in my house, just Gotham City Recording Studio. So um, I'm able to just record there. So basically throughout the week, Every day I'll write a little something, and then Wednesday and Thursday I'll add it all together and get in the booth and close it up. I'm a perfectionist, so it takes me like 30 takes. But I'll put it on like a video, 
and make it look like I took one take. <laughs> but it's a lie. What other support do you have with your music? Uh, I got a lot of support from the label, uh, Scripps. That's, uh, that's my manager and CEO. Um, he basically funds whatever I need. Also, I've uh, recently been messing with, a little bit with Two Core, uh, which is uh, which is another company out of the, the Northwest area. So I get a lot of support from them, and then obviously my wife, my kids, uh, my family, my moms, my brothers, everybody. I get support from everybody. I, I'm really I'm really lucky in that aspect for sure. Okay, what has been the most interesting show that you've ever done, and like what happened? Just something that you remember. Okay, okay so. So like when I first started out, I wasn't a solo artist. I was I was part of family business, which I still am part of. But um, I was I was only family business, right? So my brother and I have kind of a more of like a, a punchline delivery. We're more based on delivery and lyrics, you know. And we get this offer to go on this show, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And I get there, and nobody told me that everybody was wearing like makeup and masks, and like we're angry, right? <laughs> like, so I get there, and everybody's like screaming into the microphone, and they have these like crazy props that look like dead people, and they're rapping about crazy things that like I don't rap. And I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get out of here. Like, people are not gonna be feeling this music, and that's. And that's where I learned, like, you got to be prepared for what you're getting into and, and don't just accept every show that you're about to get on. And yeah. everybody's a superstar nowadays and everybody promises the world. And you got to make sure you know what you're getting into, that's for sure. That was the most interesting show I ever did. <laughs> sounds interesting. Okay, well, um, how can people go ahead and check out your music? Uh, like I said, my mixtape, uh, www.datpiff.com. Search for Hero Fame. That's hero like superhero, fame like famous. Um, caught my mixtape. It's taken back Gotham. That's free. And then if you could YouTube uh, my video, which is High Life. It's uh, it's a it's a pretty good video. It's a pretty legit production company. Sam Lingle Productions did it. So they did an excellent job on it. I got 16,000 views. A little over that. I'm trying to get some more. I'm hoping for 25,000 by the end of the month. I dropped it last week. So watch me blow. Help me out. Uh, at Hero Fame TVG. Thank you so much for joining me. Good luck on your journey. I will. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm Hero Fame and you are watching Bombshell Music News. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> right? We good? And now, here to tell you about this weekend's must-see events is Maya Holmes. Hey music lovers, I'm Maya Holmes here to give you what you've been waiting for all week. Your weekly music events update. This Friday, March 2nd, looks to be a good night. Delinquent Brothers will be hosting another one of their raves at Oddfellows Hall. This one is titled Get Some, and it only costs $5. If you're looking for something a little more foreign, you can go to Fireworks in Southtown Corvallis at 8 p.m. to see Coin of the Realm Orchestra and to hear some Ukrainian folk music. And at 10.30 p.m., Cloud9 will be having a rainbow in the clouds, a large LGBT dance party that is open to anyone looking for some fun. Saturday night, March 3rd at 8 p.m., you can see Brian Wasling pr play an acoustic show at 2nd Street Beanery, or you can listen to some hot club jazz by Mango Django at Fireworks, also at 8 p.m. And at 10 p.m., Audiophilia and Moses Maxwell will be performing at Cloud9. And as it usually is, Sunday night is lackluster in terms of quantity, but not quality. If you're in the mood for some light music to wind down your weekend, Eric Vanderwaal will be at Fireworks at 8 p.m. playing songs from the Renaissance only on his guitar. Surely thou shalt not want to miss this event. Well, that's all the music news we have for you this week, Corvallis. But be sure to tune in next week for all new interviews, stories, and of course, to see us. See you next week.